Hello, so in a previous video I showed you how to download sequences into R, into an R data frame uh, from the NCBI uh, GenBank database. Uh, you may prefer to use Uniprot, and you may be working with protein sequences, so that may be better for you. So today I'm going to show you how to download sequences directly into a R data frame uh, from Uniprot. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install a package called Uniprot R. So in order to do that, you're going to go over here to Packages and Install. And you're going to type in Uniprot R. And you're going to select Uniprot R. You're going to install it. I already have it installed, uh, so I'm not going to do that here. But that's what you're going to want to do. And you're also going to want to click Install Dependencies. Um, and click Install. And one note is that whenever you run this for the first time, you're going to have a couple of errors come up. Uh, that is because even though you clicked install dependencies, there are two dependencies that do not get installed. Uh, just search for those uh, particular dependencies. They're part of Bioconductor. Uh, whenever the errors come up, search for those uh, dependencies on the web and you'll find the bioconductor site and it'll tell you how to install those particular dependencies or those particular packages that are dependencies uh, for the Uniprot R. But once you get past that, uh, it should work seamlessly. Okay, so once you have Uniprot R and all dependencies installed, uh, we're going to jump right into the code. So we're going to call the library Uniprot R uh, using this and then we need a list of sequences to retrieve. And so this is how we're going to define these list of sequences. Now these sequences here that I have, uh, I got from the Uniprot website and I just searched for alpha actinins or actinins and picked two uh, accession numbers, the first two here and used them. So we have two accession numbers here that we're going to search for and we're going to have to retrieve uh, these sequences from two different spots and I'll show you why in just a second because generally uh, you want to have a name associated with your sequences you want to have an accession number associated with your sequences and you want to have the sequence so uh, the problem is is whenever you use the get sequences call uh, it doesn't have a name for the sequences and the accession number on both of those is actually going to be the row name. And I'll show you how we deal with that in a little bit. But first off, let's just uh, have all this broke up into to three different chunks. So we can kind of look at what's going on with each one of these chunks of code. So let's run this first chunk of code. And that's going to create two data frames for us. Uniprot names and Uniprot seeks. So let's take a look at the Uniprot names first. So the Uniprot names are going to have several uh, different variables in here that could be used as names. We got the organism, we got the organism ID, we got the gene name, uh, we got the entry name. We're going to use the entry name. Okay. So I'll show you how in a minute. Now then, the Uniprot seeks, this is where the problem comes in. So if you look at the seeks here, uh, we have the accession numbers as the row name for everyone, but there's never a name for the sequence in here. None of these variables are the name. So uh, so we're going to have to get the, the name using uh, a different call. And that call is the get names taxa call. So that's the reason why we have two data frames right here in the beginning. OK, and the row names, as I said, are the accession numbers. But we want them as a column. We don't want them as the, as the row names. We want them as actual data. So we're going to define a new column in each one of these data frames and we're going to call it ACC underscore NO uh, for both of the data frames, the Uniprot names and the Uniprot seeks that we created in this previous block of code or previous chunk of code. So uh, we're also going to limit the different variables that we keep in each one of those data frames. So we're only going to keep the accession number and the entry name from the Uniprot names uh, data frame, and we're only going to keep the accession number and the sequence from the Uniprot uh, seeks data frame. 
and I'll show you why in just a minute. It has to do with how we're going to merge those those two uh, data frames. And then, uh, as we we get those data frames with just the accession number and the sequence, they have a common uh, variable, the accession number. So we're going to use that in a merge call. We're going to call the merge function to merge those two data frames. And we're going to merge them by accession number. In other words, that's the common field. So let's run this chunk of code. So now we should have a quick, clean sequence data frame, which consists of the data from both of those. So let's look at that data frame. So yes, we do. We have uh, the accession numbers are no longer the row names. So now we actually have a variable named accession number. We have the entry name, and then we have the sequence. So now we got what most people are going to want in any analysis they do. A name for the sequence, an accession number for the sequence, and the sequence itself. So now the last step that we need to uh, carry out is to clean up the interface. We don't need all these uh, data frames that we created over here. So let's clean it up a little bit to where we just leave uh, our final clean data frame. So there we go. There's our final clean data frame. Uh, we have the sequences that we want here and nothing else. So what we can do now, uh, I just split that into separate chunks in order to show you all, but it really doesn't need to be uh, three separate chunks of code. It's really just one quick shot. And we'll go ahead and clean up this environment over here. So we have no uh, data frames or anything, any variables or anything stored over there. So we're just going to run it all the way through now. And that leaves us our single clean data frame. Now then, you're probably not going to use this as much for two sequences as you would if you had 100 sequences or 500 sequences that you uh, wanted to bring into R. So let's look at how you get multiple sequences like that into R. And it's going to involve a little bit of uh, using a text editor, uh, but it's really not, not that difficult. So let's, uh, I've already searched for actinins on the Uniprot website. Let's show, uh, let's just stick with 25 sequences for now, just for uh, demonstration purposes. We're going to select all 25 of those and we're going to add them to our basket. So then we're going to go up here to our basket, and as soon as they all populate in there, let's give it just a second, we're going to select all of the sequences in the basket, we're going to click download, and we're going to change this to a list. And then we want that uncompressed, that list, and we're going to download that list. And we're going to show that list in the folder here. There it is. But what we want to, want to do is we want to go over here and we want to open up a text editor called Notepad++. This is going to be your easiest method to do this. Uh, there's some problems with using your, your standard Notepad on a Windows machine. Uh, so download Notepad++. Uh, it's a free program. Install it. And then you're going to open that list. Okay, and that list is separated by lines. So it's individual lines for each one of the, the sequences. And this is what we need to change in here. So we're going to go to search. And we're going to go to replace. And we're going to replace the new line character, which is forward slash in, with quote, comma, quote. Okay, and we're going to replace all. backslash in, excuse me. Okay, so we've replaced all of those. So the only spots that we need to worry about are at the beginning and the end of our list. So we need to adjust those a little bit. We had an extra comma, an extra quote at the end of the list, and we were missing a comma at the beginning of the list. But now we have all of the different accession numbers. We can copy them using control C. And now we can paste them right here. 
in the list of sequences to retrieve, or list of seeks to retrieve, and we can run the code. So right now it's retrieving the sequences, uh, it's retrieving the sequence names, uh, it's going to limit all that stuff down, it's going to create the different data frames, it's going to merge the data frames, and then ultimately it's going to spit out just a single clean data frame that we want with the 25 different sequences in it. And that's what we have here. So now you can use that data frame for further analysis. Whatever your, your down the, uh, downstream analysis is, uh, you now have all the sequences that you need in a single data frame, and you're ready to go. So I hope this helped you out. I hope this made this uh, a little bit easier for you. Uh, if it did, please like the video and uh, share it. Uh, as well as uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks and have a great day.